Well, big, big news over the weekend, of course, coming from the Middle East, that John Kerry, our Secretary of State, has apparently been able to uh, somehow induce the Palestinians and the Israelis to return to the peace table. Now, you have to credit uh, Mr. Kerry. It has been a full court press, I promise you, uh, of what he's done. He's been in the Middle East six times in the last four months, so he has certainly kept the airwaves hot between here and there over this time, uh, using all of his diplomatic skill to try to whittle away one at a time at the objections. In the meantime, some events lined up to push the parties toward the peace table once again. For example, uh, the November 29th of 2012 vote by the United Nations to recognize a Palestinian state within the 1967 borders. Uh, that in itself is putting a lot of pressure on Prime Minister Netanyahu. He's being uh, warned on every side. You do understand that this is a vote by the world community. You're going to come under increasing pressure if you are going to insist on remaining an occupying power, although Israel's not really an occupying power, yet uh, they did take land that was occupied by Jordan. And now then everybody said, well, that is Palestinian land. It has never been Palestinian land. That is a total deception. That's a mirage. It simply does not exist, never has existed. It's never been Palestinian land. And yet somehow the media has sold this myth to the entire world. Well, now all the pressure is coming on uh, Mr. Netanyahu to make compromises. And um, Benjamin Netanyahu is no babe in the woods. He has been in many different realms of politics, both national and international. He was the ambassador to the U.N. from the nation of Israel for some time and a very effective ambassador at that. He has now held the position of prime minister twice, treasury secretary in Israel uh, for a term. And so he has been in a lot of different positions. He understands the nuances of all the politics, and he understands what's going on right now. The vote on November the 29th of last year just drove the point home. And it's so interesting that just the very day when John Kerry was arriving back in the Middle East to try to ram home uh, the absolute necessity of peace talks, that's the day that Europe decided to once again declare that they would have no dealings whatsoever with any West Bank entity and that any deal signed with Israel proper would have to have a clause stating that uh, the West Bank has no interest in this, there's no connections whatsoever. And if the people are unwilling to do that, then there would be a total boycott of all Israeli products since Europe is Israel's number one trading partner. I'm talking about a block of over 500 million people with some of the most powerful nations in the world. Uh, then all of this is like closing in from every side. Well, the, plus the United States put in incredible pressure. It's hard to resist when the Secretary of State of the United States is there putting pressure on you. It's hard to resist all of those things. And then in your own country, you just... Uh, lost a lot of power in the recent elections. You thought you were going to get um, uh, 31 votes. You got 21 votes. Uh, your great, your political hand is greatly weakened. Uh, the majority of your country wants you to strike a deal. I mean, everything is converging right now. So consequently, and I don't think that gives Mr. Netanyahu an excuse because leadership does not look out for itself. Leadership looks out for the best interests of the country. Nevertheless, those are some of the forces that are presently converging. Now, let me just give you the picture of what actually is happening now because this could be the beginning of one of the two greatest prophetic fulfillments in the last 2,000 years. Let me make sure you get that. What happened this weekend could be the door opening to one of the two greatest prophetic fulfillments in the last 2,000 years. Because we know that when a peace agreement is finally concluded, which settles the borders of the Palestinian state, 
and which places the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement. When those two things converge, that, according to my understanding of Bible prophecy, is the event that will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. How much bigger could it be? I mean, to know that we've just moved into the final seven years. Now, please don't mishear me. I did not say we've moved into the final seven years now. I said if the agreement is struck and if it creates the Palestinian state leaving Jews out there under Palestinian control, and if it internationalizes the Temple Mount, if it places the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement under international control, it appears to me from Scripture, and I've been teaching this a long, long time, that that is the event that will mark the beginning of the final seven years to Armageddon, and it will mean we're only three and a half years away from the revealing of the Antichrist and the full establishment of his one world governmental system. So these are heady times. Now, I want to bring you up to date because this story, well, everybody just absolutely has to hear it. After substantially lowering his expectations, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was able to save his mission to restart peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians with only moments to spare before the sixth round of shuttle diplomacy crashed. According to the Kerry formula, the forthcoming negotiations would focus on attaining an interim peace accord without determining final borders. Now, remember, we've talked about this. I've already told you that this agreement would be an interim agreement, leaving the issue of the status of Jerusalem untouched, not leaving the Temple Mount status untouched. That'll be under a sharing arrangement. But apparently, East Jerusalem at this time will not become the capital of the Palestinians. So establishing borders, let me read on a little bit more for you. It was also agreed, according to this exclusive Debka file report, that the negotiating process would last no less than nine months up until March of 2014, during which Israel agreed to an undeclared partial standstill on construction in Judea and Samaria outside the settlement blocks, except for building to accommodate natural growth. Now, there are certain settlement blocks that there is general agreement, those will end up staying under Israeli control. So they are not declaring a standstill on construction in those settlement blocks where Mr. Abbas and the Palestinians have no objection. However, in all other areas of the West Bank, apparently there is going to be a freeze of building, recognizing that those are under negotiation. The Palestinian leader dropped his stipulation, Abbas dropped his stipulation for a total construction freeze. He also promised not to carry out his threat to push anti-Israeli measures through UN and other international institutions during the talks. Now, that's really important because the UN is convening in September for its annual summit and consequently, Abbas has apparently said, okay, we're not going to do anything like that. We're not going to try to bypass the negotiations by going straight to the United Nations. Now, that's important because Netanyahu understands crystal clear that the Palestinians have a huge majority in favor of their stance and a, a, a tremendous majority against Israel and almost anything that they would propose there. Israel's been losing votes there for a long, long time. And, of course, the people of Israel write this up to the uh, latent anti-Semitism that they believe actually permeates the world to this day. Now, the U.S. Secretary also persuaded Abbas Friday to waive his ultimatum for peace talks to be based on 1967 borders. Instead, President Barack Obama will send him a letter affirming U.S. recognition that the object of the negotiations is to establish a Palestinian state as the national home of the Palestinian people whose borders will be based on 1967 lines. So this agreement is not coming from the Israeli government. It is simply going to be a letter of recognition from President Barack Obama, Israel's very best friend, 
that the goal of this whole negotiation process will be the establishment of a national home for the Palestinian people uh, along the 1967 borders with certain land swaps, which will have to be negotiated. Obama will send another letter to Netanyahu affirming that the negotiations must lead to the recognition of the state of Israel as the national home of the Jewish people whose future borders will be based on on the 1967 lines while also accommodating Israel's security needs and its realistic demographic circumstances. What does all of that mean? Well, it basically means this. Yes, they'll be based on the 67 lines. However, those 67 lines are not secure borders. They're indefensible borders. Consequently, there are going to have to be some adjustments to those lines and the letter will, both of these letters are going to give room for they're they're going to give wobble room, waffle room, but and that's what negotiations are all about. If everything were settled in advance, there would be no reason to negotiate. Just sign the agreement and, and go back home, and it's over. Nevertheless, that's what's going on right now. Uh, the talks will proceed on two levels. The Israeli and Palestinian negotiating teams in Washington who will defer to the principals, Benjamin Netanyahu, Mahmoud Abbas, and John Kerry. Those three, I'm talking about Abbas, Netanyahu, and Kerry, will only meet for direct talks when the teams have tangible results in the bag. So these negotiating teams, which will be made up of Mr. Arakat of the Palestinians, Zippy Livni on the Israeli side, and also a very trusted uh, aide, Mr. Moko, who has been at all of the agreements since Netanyahu took office. He will be there to make sure that Netanyahu's uh, wishes are not uh, negotiated away. In addition to that, Mr. Indyke is going to be the mediator at all these agreements. He, of course, is part of the U.S. government, and we'll be talking more about him a little bit, bit later on. Now, before leaving Amman, the U.S. Secretary said cautiously, the agreement is still in the process of being formalized. Supposedly, there were some hanging chads, so to speak, and that's the reason they're all going to meet this week is to wrap everything up, seal it so everybody can have a good understanding of what is actually going on. We are taking your calls on the program today. Furthermore, uh, the number to call us, 877 time. But we will also cover some more articles emanating out of the Middle East, very important articles right now that all of us need to know what, in fact, is going on. You're listening to Politics and Religion, and we'll be back in just a moment. 